What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Texas Chainsaw Massacre video. Today I want to go over several different comments made by both Matt Shacha and Andy Cleaves over at Gun Interactive on the subreddit. As always, a ton of great conversations are playing out on the TCM subreddit, so if you haven't already joined, you should. I left a link in the description below. Now, some of these posts I'm about to talk about actually come from a few weeks back. I apologize for the delay. I was in the middle of moving, and it took me a couple weeks to get everything set back up. But now we're here, we're ready to go, and I definitely want to hear your thoughts on all of these new updates. Let's start by once again talking about the combat system. In our previous video on TCM, we talked about how combat would be extremely limited, and this led to a lot of us jumping to the conclusion that the game would play similar to Dead by Daylight in terms of loops and pallets, etc. Now, while that style of gameplay certainly works for Dead by Daylight and is definitely a ton of fun, I think a lot of us want something different with TCM, and not just that, but all future asymmetrical horror games. That way, we're getting something different every single time. Well, Matt Shacha clarified a bit on just how combat and chase will work within TCM. An example more in line with our game, the combat topic. When I mentioned that combat is not like F-13, people got a little worried and assumed that meant you must play it in a strictly evasive way, like circling pallets. One user submitted a poll assuming that you either fight with pipes and bats or circle pallets, as if there is no other option in game design. If we had shared the overall mechanics of the match at once, you'd see something that isn't present in that poll, stealth. Stealth plays a bigger role in the Text Chainsaw Massacre than in Friday the 13th of the game, but because we cannot share the full gameplay yet, people only see what they know to be true in other games. In truth, stealth and the last ditch effort to make a desperate attempt to fight back both play a role in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But that isn't stealth like it was in F13, and it isn't fighting back like it was in F13. It's Texas, and it's unique to this game. When we reveal full gameplay, it will take shape for the community in a whole new way. We need to make sure we reveal enough right now to answer the curious minds of the community while still holding back enough that we don't mislead them. At least holding back until we do the full gameplay reveal, I mean. So you see, it's not that simple. I hope Matt's explanation here on the importance of stealth brings some comfort to those that were worried about combat being so limited. Uh, for me, this is exactly what I want to see in a TCM game. The use of stealth and it playing such an important role should lead to some really intense and suspenseful gameplay. The most important thing to note, in my mind at least, is that horror asymmetrical multiplayer is really still quite new. And we've honestly only seen two or three well-known examples so far in this circle. It's really hard to wrap your head around different styles of gameplay that can exist within this genre aside from what we've already come to know and love. And the fact that, you know, we're bound to see many diverse gameplay experiences in the genre in the future is extremely exciting and something we as fans just shouldn't forget. At this point, my main goal is just to stay open-minded because I'm certain that there are gameplay mechanics in TCM that we've never seen before inside of the asymmetrical multiplayer horror genre. Now, moving on to the most important question to date, will Grandpa be featured in the game? No more speculation on this one, Matt confirmed. All I'll say for now is that Grandpa is confirmed in game. How Grandpa functions is not something we're ready to reveal just yet. And of course, Grandpa is indeed featured in the poster for the game as well, chilling right at the top of the stairs. Now, while I struggle to wrap my head around how he will be used in game, it's really cool to see that he's going to be implemented in some way, shape, or form. He's obviously an important part to the family within the original TCM movie, so having him featured one way or another is great. Now, will he just be an Easter egg? A playable character? Maybe an AI threat to survivors? Or involved in objectives somehow? Who knows, but I'm excited either way. Speaking of AI, how about bots? You know, will there be offline bots similar to F-13? As for bots, that is a tough one to answer now. What I can say is not only does that depend on post-release and a lot of things lining up, it also depends on interest. Then, even if bots are a go sometime down the line, there are stages of how big of a feature to make bots. It's not the same as to create a family player slash victim bot mode as it is to create a victim player slash family bot mode. So there's two parts here. Will or won't bots be a potential add-on, and what type of bots can be done? And honestly, 
I don't have any answers on that at this time, but trust that we hear the feedback on this, so keep it coming. So based on Matt's answer here, it's unlikely that we see an offline bots mode, at least at launch. I will say I think it's important to note that it isn't a 1v7 scenario like Friday the 13th. The fact that there will be more than one killer in every game makes a bot situation even more difficult. You know, single player does end up coming to the game. I'd be more interested in seeing something similar to single player challenges. You know, while bots are fun at times in F13, there isn't exactly a ton of replayability there. And I'd assume that also would be the case for TCM. Now, how about kills? Will the game feature cinematic deaths similar to F13 as well as non-weapon kills? Matt really couldn't say much about this, but he did give some details. I want to sync with some of the team before saying too much here. All I can say right now is that the family can kill and we try to minimize the cinematic side so it feels seamless in game. I'll elaborate further as soon as I have a chance to get the latest on this angle from the team. Like I said, not many details there, but I guess what we can pull from that is the killing experience that we know in F13, of picking up survivors and carrying them to environmental kills or cinematic weapon kills, will not be in TCM. I'm sure they have some gory kills planned as, you know, it's TCM and you kind of have to, but also because they took the time to mocap with Kane Hodder, so why wouldn't you implement those gory graphic kills? It's just a process of getting to said kills that will be unique to TCM and probably less frequent. So how about the preference system? Obviously, most people want to wield the chainsaw as Leatherface, and with more than one killer in each game, who gets to be Leatherface and who doesn't? We're still working out those details. We want players to be able to target playing as their favorites or characters they're working on in the metagame, but we also only have one of each in match. So you can pick in the lobby screen, but only one of each. The part we're still exploring is how do we allow a preference or default, if any? But just know this, with only one of each in match, you will enter a lobby and see Leatherface is already picked, regardless of your preference. Now while they are still grinding out the details, it seems that it may be a first come first serve situation. You know, for those that play Rainbow Six Siege, I think that may be the type of system we see in play here. You know, if your quote unquote operator is already chosen, you just have to pick your next favorite. Ideally, each killer will be fun and unique to play, so the loss of not playing Leatherface every single game will hopefully prove to not be a big deal. Uh, furthermore, I'm interested in how players will be picked to be killer. I mean, will players all join a single lobby and killers are picked at random? Or will we be able to select an option to exclusively play as either killer or survivor? Now, uh, we don't have details on this yet, but I'm sure we will in the near future. Okay, so just a few more smaller details that I thought would be worth mentioning for diehard fans that need to know. First, the cover art. How did Gunn make decisions on what the survivors would look like on the poster? Andy Cleves delivers a quote from Wes Keltner on this one. I wanted to chime in on some speculation that this image is of canon victims from the 1974 film. Here's a direct quote on this from Gun CEO Wes Keltner. When Jake, the artist that made the poster, and I started laying out the composition for the key art, we attacked it in quadrants, so to speak. You focus on specific areas within the piece, and you try to tell a micro story. We want to set the tone, give some nods to the IP, and allude to elements of gameplay. I wanted the family to be big in the scene, looming, scary, and the focal point of the art. But the longer you look, the more you find. That led us to the discussion of victims. I wanted them to be small to mirror the feeling victims feel in the game. But are those the victims from the 1974 film? No. At that size, Jake and I decided to just make them generic. Now, was there some inspiration from the original film? Well, of course, that's what we do. Of course, the poster art is amazing, and I love hearing more details on how it was made. But one piece of Wes's statement stands out to me. He mentions that you want the cover art to allude to elements of gameplay. Now, while I'm probably overanalyzing this, as I do, I think it's interesting that gameplay was directly in mind when designing the poster. I wonder how many theories we can create on gameplay based simply on the poster alone. Uh, do me a favor and go crazy in the comments about that. Next, how about the movie coming to Netflix? Will its release play a factor for the game's release date? The new movie release date has no bearing on the game calendar. The two are completely independent of each other. Now, despite Matt's statement here, I am really curious if we will see future DLC that includes characters from this new movie. And with that, only time will tell. And finally, although this isn't much of a question about TCM, 
What other horror IPs have Gunn tried securing? What about Halloween? The Text Chainsaw Massacre was never going to be a Halloween game, since we don't design, develop games, and attach license to them after the design is done. We design everything we do with the IP in mind. So the core design, the very bones of this game, have always been designed, built, and refined with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in mind. I think the most important thing to note here, because it is truly what defines Gun and our core philosophy on how we treat these horror IPs, is that we don't slap brands on game designs like a sticker. We build games from the ground up with horror in mind, franchises in mind. There's identity in that. The DNA of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre IP is present in every choice made in the design of this game. And Matt elaborates a bit further, saying, As for whether or not a license was pursued by the team, that would first be dependent on whether or not we had a design plan that would fit the Halloween franchise. But I will say this, Gun is very active in pursuit of horror franchises we think we have a solid plan for, as evidenced by the very public pursuit of The Crow. But considering the extensive negotiations required to reach license agreements, we often do not comment on them publicly. The Crow is the exception, since it's also part of a plan to show a 100% transparent view of the entire process from the first design notes all the way through the process as a kind of learning experience for the community. An insight into what it takes to make these games in a way. So based on what Matt said here, it sounds like Gun may have a very bright future in terms of horror IP video games. We of course do not know what IPs they have sought after other than The Crow, but their love of the genre is quite broad. I'm extremely curious and excited to see what the future holds in terms of future games from Gun. but right now, TCM is the priority, and I'll be sure to continue bringing you the latest updates every step of the way. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss any future videos. And if you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.